What's up everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. My name is Corey and today in the stock market we're starting to bounce as SPY is trying to retest the breakdown below 390. First up, let's take a look at the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, all right. So today in SPY we're up 0.78% and SPY is starting to look like it's getting a double bottom off of Friday's low, which is obviously a bullish indication that we could see higher prices. But do keep in mind, we do have a longer term downtrend of lower highs and lower lows that could take us all the way down to retest the June lows by month end. So in the bearish scenario, as this negatively sloping 20 simple moving average comes down, we'll be looking to see if price action is going to get rejected from that level for another lower high before the next lower low and still reach that price target to the downside by month end. Now, if the bulls can get over that 20 simple moving average and start to push up back above the resistance trend line, then we can start getting more bullish that the downtrend is likely ending. So for the time being, you just need to be aware that the downside scenario is the highest likelihood because we do have the downtrend, but that does not guarantee that we need to go down there and fill those gaps right now. Just looking at the daily chart, you can see that we have plenty of gaps to the upside, just like we have gaps to the downside. So typically when you have gaps to the upside and the downside, I would go with the direction of the trend. And right now that is still lower highs and lower lows which does mean we are still in a downtrend. Now the critical level the bulls need to get SPY over is going to be 390, but that doesn't guarantee that just because SPY gets over 390 that we're out of the woods and there's no more downside coming, but it does mean in the short term we could see a sustainable two to three day bounce. This is likely going to turn into a volatile week in either direction by the end of the week because we do have FOMC on Wednesday, and that will end up being a catalyst in one of these directions. So just be aware that while SPY is below 390, that is a very risk off looking chart that is very likely going to speed up to the downside. And while SPY is above 390, it is looking a lot more bullish, but that doesn't guarantee we won't just print another lower high before the next lower low. So the most critical level and basically the only level you need to be paying attention to is SPY 390, but below 390, you'll be wanting to look at 385, the gap fill at 387.5 and then the support level and gap fill area right around 368. Now to the upside, if we break over 390, we'll want to get back over that negatively sloping 20 simple moving average, which is going to be a moving target. But by tomorrow, it should be somewhere around 398. And then we have the 50 daily moving average at 403. If we can get above all of that resistance, then we'll be looking more bullish and we can start talking about the gap fills above and that should help us break the downtrend. So just be aware of both scenarios using 390 as your risk level to short from or 390 as your risk level to go long from depending on which side of 390 the price action is currently at. With today's close, we close below 390 so it's still favoring the bears to short at this level using it as resistance to drive prices lower but I will caution you there is a double bottom currently in play that does favor a potential gap up, which the bulls could use to try to gap up above this resistance. On the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs, we're up 0.6% today and the triple Qs are also looking like they're double bottoming off of Friday's low, which means the triple Qs could be coming back up to retest the breakdown at 293. 293 is the equivalent of SPY 390, so that's your risk level to short from or to go long from. And to the upside, if we continue higher, you'll be looking for that negatively sloping 20 simple moving average right around 300 and the resistance trend line right around 303. Above 303, we still have the 50 daily moving average, which is currently just below 308. So do keep that in mind. That is going to be all of your critical resistance. Now to the downside, if we get rejected from the resistance at 293, you'll be looking for the price targets at 284, the previous daily low at 280, and then we have the price target by month end that we could reach, which is all the way down there at 267.5. Keep in mind the lower Bollinger Bands are not allowing for much lower prices, so we could be going higher in the short term and still make a lower high to go to lower prices by the end of the the month. So keep all of that in mind and make sure you're managing a risk very tightly. In the Dow Jones, we're up 0.68% and the Dow Jones also double bottomed off of Friday's low and very likely coming back up to retest 312. Above 312, look for resistance right around 317 and the resistance trend line at 320 and the 50 daily moving average is just below 323. To the downside, you have price targets at 305.8 298.7 and 293.5. On the Russell 2000 IWM ETF, we were up 0.85% and the Russell 2000 is still holding the support trend line, which is showing that the small caps are relatively looking the strongest. Below this support level at 178, we could be coming back down to 174.7, 
168 and then retesting the June low at 163.75 with the upside resistance levels right around 181, 183, and 185. On the ARK ETF, we were down 0.21% as ARK continues to close below 43, which is the resistance, which means we could be coming back down to retest support at 40. Below 40, look for a retest of the low at 36.5, and you're not getting bullish until we can break back over the 50 daily moving average, which is just below 46. On the VIX, we were down 2.13%, so we continue to see the VIX getting crushed every time it gets above 27, but as you can tell, the VIX is still making higher lows. So this is somewhat of a triangle forming in the VIX with the top right around 27.7, and we do have the higher lows, so eventually we are going to see a breakout, and the bull breakout in the VIX will be the break below 24, and the bear breakout in the VIX will be the breakout above 28. On Bitcoin, we're currently up 0.44% and Bitcoin did have a very volatile session coming all the way down to 18,000 and getting very sharp buying, which is on high volume. So there was a lot of buyers that continue to show up around this support zone. If we do start breaking below 19,000, that does increase the probability we go for that next leg lower at 17,000. But so far, we're seeing enough buyers at this support zone to not break below it. The bulls will need to hold this support and break all the way back above 21,600 and 22,000 and then we should start to see Bitcoin developing a bull trend. On Amazon stock, we're up 0.91% as Amazon is at the lower Bollinger Band for the second day in a row and trying to close the gap above just above 125. The bear breakdown should get a rejection right around 126 to come down to 115 and the bull breakout will require Amazon getting back over 128 and then just above 129. So if Amazon is breaking above about 130, you will be wanting to get more bullish for the gap fill above at 134, but stay risk off while it's below 126 because it could be going to 115. On Microsoft stock, we were flat only going down 0.09%, but as you can tell intraday, Microsoft did take out the June low, and so far we continue to find buyers around that level because we did close near the high of the day. Now Microsoft is looking very weak and it has a ton of gaps to fill to the upside, so this could be a very good time to start buying Microsoft with a great risk reward ratio, but do keep in mind if it breaks down below about 242, it is likely coming all the way down to about 231. This is a very weak looking stock and it is a market moving stock, so if it does start to look stronger with a bounce off 242, look for a retest of resistance right around 252, and that should help the rest of the indices climb higher as well. Nvidia stock was up 1.39% as Nvidia continues to bounce off the support right around 129 but cannot yet break above the resistance just above 134. If we can break resistance look for the gap fill right around 142 and the next strong resistance at 145 and on a break below 129 it's instantly risk off and more than likely trying to retest the previous low right around 126. On Tesla stock, we were up 1.89% and Tesla closed right at that resistance at 309 and the bulls will want to try to gap up over that resistance so they don't have to deal with it. Tesla above 309 could start running into the 330s which is our next upside price target but a rejection from here could also start to look like a potential double top with the strong support and gap fill down here right around 289.5. Downside targets if we do get rejected are going to be 304.5 and 296 so watch those levels and stay bullish as long as we're above 296. On Apple stock, we were up 2.51% as Apple did see a very strong bounce today and came all the way back up to the resistance right around 154. Above 154, look for resistance right around 159 to 160 and the bull breakout will require the break over 160. So if we continue to see a bounce in Apple, that'll be good for the indices because it will try to push the indices higher. But if we do see a rejection from 154, look for a retest of about 151 or the next support zone at 147. The financials were up 0.6% today with a very bullish candle coming all the way down from the lower Bollinger Band closing near the high of the day and closing the gap above. The next critical resistance will be at 33.5 with the potential to fill the gap to the upside. The industrial sector was up 0.87% today also with a very bullish engulfing candle but it was below the lower Bollinger Band so for all we know this could just be a dead cat bounce with the potential to fill the gap to the upside. The healthcare sector was down 0.93% today, bouncing off of the previous low of support just below 125, and we do have gaps to fill to the upside. The energy sector was down 1.02% today, bouncing from below the lower Bollinger Band and still closing back over the 50 daily moving average, but ever since we lost the support trend line, 
we are in jeopardy of seeing lower prices in the energy sector that could take us down to fill the gap at 69. So jumping back over to the S&P 500, watch this very critical risk level at SPY 390, and you will want to manage your risk around that level. Whether you're taking short trades or long trades, that is going to be your risk level. Keep in mind, this is still going to be a very volatile month, so I do expect to see whipsaws in both directions, so be prepared for both scenarios, and if you're not sure what to do, just sit in cash and wait for more clarity. Also, don't forget that I still have a 50% off promotion code for your first month of bank trade alerts. All you need to do is apply the coupon code Labor Day, all one word, no spaces, to claim your 50% off your first month discount. Bank only trades the ETFs TQQ and SQQ, and I think now is the best time to try out Bank. You can find out more information and learn how to subscribe by clicking on the link in the description of this video. If you're looking to become a better price action trader, consider joining the Stocks Channel Trading Discord community, where you can get access to all of my intraday updates and analysis. You can learn how to join the Stocks Channel Discord by clicking on the link below. So thank you for watching everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.